it's recording and saying from my side. Okay, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's still loading. Uh, it's, it's interesting, yeah. All right, so uh, welcome everybody to this week's um, uh, Parker Office Hour call. Uh, happy to have you. And we have a couple of things on the agenda. Um, first and foremost, um, because um, on Tuesdays, there's also the tech observability meeting happening. <laughs> Michael agrees. <already. laughs> I was already um, wondering if I thought like, well, maybe I'm the only one. So. Yeah, we. I think we we realized just after scheduling uh, this initially, and then we just went with it. But it would be great to to move this. Uh, and Kemal uh, actually created a Twitter poll. So if you have a Twitter account and you want to vote to either move this to Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, uh, Thursday. Um, there's your choice to, a uh, chance to, to vote and make your voice heard. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see on when, like where to move this. Uh, I think we can maybe skip the, uh, keep the two week cadence. Maybe we do it just monthly, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think two weeks is just fine for now. And, yeah, same, same let us know what you think. Same time. Same yeah, same, same time, just moving the day. Um, I think that's most reasonable also for, for our team, uh, since people are in India, people are in the US. So people, most of us can join from our side, from the Paka team. Um, yeah, so with that out of the way, I think Frederick wants to give an update on the columnar storage and the progress uh we are making on on that side of things yes so just kind of giving a quick update on uh where we're at so we've got kind of the basic functionality uh implemented we can write data to it we can read data from it we can um filter data that's kind of uh where we're at the two big things um that are kind of left and until we can actually plug it into parka is um, we need to finish up um, <laughs> aggregations, obviously. So um, basically, right now you can you know write data to the storage, you can read data, and you can filter the data, but you can't actually do useful aggregations, right? Like you can't merge all of the data by um, the stack trace or something. So at the bottom line is we can't actually produce profiles that the uh, um, Front end can render right now, so that's kind of obviously the the step that uh, needs to happen before we can do that. And then another thing that maybe isn't strictly necessary, um, but something that we um, have already in the design that we already thought about thoroughly is the like um, isolation um, that we wanted to implement, um, which is kind of half implemented. Um, but it's one of those things that if we don't do it today or if we don't do it immediately, it's really difficult to implement later. We learned this from Prometheus where it took us two and a half years to implement isolation after finishing up the first iteration of the first iteration of the v two storage. Um, so um, we're we're basically implementing a version of uh, what's called multi-version optimistic concurrency control. Um, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, everything's very detailed in the RFC already, if you're interested in the details for that. Um, have a look at that. I'm sure once we actually implement it, we'll n have a couple more details, and I think it, it'll be an interesting blog post as well. I think it's pretty unique to, um, the design is pretty unique to our like insert only architecture of the storage. So yeah, that's basically it. I mean, and then we'll keep iterating, but at that point, um, once we have those two things, it's kind of ready to be plugged into, into Parka. Um, we can probably even already put it, uh, plug it into Parka as soon as aggregations are implemented, which I'm hoping by the end of this week um, will be the case. Um, and then we can keep iterating on various things. I'm, gu I'm guessing that there will be a lot of um, optimization potential in the entire execution engine and uh, storage, of course. So lots of opportunity for folks to um, to 
contribute. Uh, Michael, go ahead. When you say isolation, you mean like tenants in, in the sense of what Cortex does or what, what's, what do you mean with isolation? Good, good question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about um, transactions basically. Um, so that we isolate reads and writes and that we can make sure that when you read data that um, a write has fully completed. So, the, so you're not reading partial data. That more like isolation, is that the, I, I would think that's more like atomicity, no? I don't know, isolation, okay. It's, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, yes, you're, you're right. And um, I, I don't know if you've read the database internals book, um it's a it's a great book um if if, if you haven't um and in there they discuss that um this this kind of thing is actually really vague in the like asset description right. um w which one it truly belongs to nobody can actually right, say. right, right, right. <laughs> no no I'm, I'm not gonna go into asset versus yeah. base and, and and all of that i was just like isolation i mentally connected with uh, kind of like tenants having multiple, you know, customers or whatever, run, you know, binary or whatever, um, and those being isolated. But that's obviously something else. Thanks for yeah. That. So, um, I mean, we 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 didn't think um, we didn't think too much about it, but um, the the um, there is a basic. Um, strategy for that implemented as well, which is just there's a separation of databases um, that fundamentally exists. So you can create a database one and a database two, and they're completely like physically separate. Um, so this is already um, part of the database design essentially from, from day one. Cool. And then it's up to the like, layer above to figure out which database to actually write to at, at the end of the day the schema scheme is exactly the same as in as in cortex except that we already have that layer that can route between different database instances um right. cool thank you um that that's basically it so yeah i'm I'm hoping that by the end of the week uh, we'll have aggregations implemented and then we can start plugging it um into parka it's probably not going to be you know in a releasable state quite yet because we don't have anything like retention or something like that um or cutting a block um or cut, like flushing some data from memory to to disk um once we have something like that and actually be, are able to like flush it to parquet, that's the point I think where we can probably start releasing this. Um, or we can say, you know, if you choose to use this storage, then once we've accumulated one gigabyte of data, we just throw everything away and we start over. Like as long as we keep the old storage, I think this is something that we could consider just to, just to get, just to be able to exercise the storage a little bit. Curious if, if there are like thoughts around this. Um, like basically, I'm just trying to figure out ways how we can get this into people's hands as quickly as possible. Can be a feature flag, I guess. Something like that. Uh, absolutely. Actually, because we've uh, iterated on the storage a couple of times, we already have a feature flag for for storage versions. So yeah, absolutely. That's what. What would happen? Good point, though. All right, cool. Thanks, everyone. That's all I had to say on that. Thing. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think I just want to quickly shout out one one new feature. Um, unfortunately, Monica, who is working on this, uh, couldn't make it, but um, still want to quickly shout out a new feature that's coming soon that's really cool. So if you know Prometheus, uh, Prometheus has this Prometheus targets page where you can see uh, what things are being scraped and if, if these um, uh, targets uh, are in a healthy or a unhealthy state. Um, so if you 
don't use the Parker agent. So the Parker agent pushes profiles via gRPC and reads these uh, with eBPF. But if you actually choose to instead uh, use the pprof endpoints that uh, many of the Go applications already ship, um, we now have this like targets page um, that Monica worked on um, that shows you, yeah, if, for example, the endpoints are in a good state or, uh, for example, down here, they weren't because they just started the server. They were unspecified and so on. Um, I'm uh, hopeful that maybe Monica can come on to the next one or, or at some point once it's shipped and, and give us a bit more detail. But I just quickly want, wanted to mention that uh, there's something to look out for, which is really exciting to me. And especially since, let me just restart Parka with a new configuration that is broken, uh, you will see uh, if something's wrong, uh, what is wrong. And um, there was something up until a couple of uh, releases ago wasn't really possible unless you are looking into the logs. So yeah, really exciting. And I think Monica did a great job. So just want to quickly shout this out. And yeah, any questions? Uh, otherwise, I think we are also at the end of the agenda, so we can open it up to questions Questions generally. If there are questions, we have a couple of new faces in here, so I'm sure you have questions. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. Hi. Um, yeah, I was just wondering what are the kind of future plans for storage? Um, I was kind of kicking Parker about today for the first time, um, and you know things are only in memory at the moment. Um, so I was just wondering you know, what are the kind of future plans for storage? Great question. So we've been kind of, um, we've been thinking about this, uh, the future of the storage uh, for quite some time. We tried out a bunch of things and we kind of settled on like a columnar storage being the, um, the future of the Parker storage. And right now we're actually, we're in the process of implementing that columnar storage and um, it basically everything in the in that um, implementation is um, based on the Apache Arrow and the Apache Parquet um, projects, um, and so basically we accumulate the data again in memory. Although it's a separate implementation from in memory implementation from what Parker has today, um, and then once we let's say accumulate. Um, either you, we can, it, it'll be either configurable by time or by um, bytes. So let's say you can, you can say, I want to have at most one gigabyte of memory usage. And every time Parka accumulates one gigabyte, it flushes all of that into a Parquet file. And then from there on only reads it um, from, from that file. Um, so that's the, that's the idea about let's call it persistence, right? Everything will be flushed into Parquet files and then Parquet will read it back from there. Hopefully that answers the question. I'm happy to go into any more detail that you might be interested in. Um, yeah, I suppose what, is, what, what about um, the compaction side of things? Um, I mean, I can imagine, you know, being in a place where you're like, okay, you know, how does this release compare to you know the last four or five releases that we've done? Things like that. Um, are you talking about um, the the Parka releases, or are you talking about like a as in you're looking at different versions of profiling data that you're ingesting into Parka of some other software? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, the latter. So, like, you know, for instance, if I was, you know, internally looking at, you know, releases of some application that we could say, okay, over the last six months, we've done six releases, and you know, we don't want like the same granularity for stuff that was six months ago, but we'd still like to do, you know, a kind of, um, um, you know, a comparison. Yeah, great, great question. Um, so. I think the, the the term that we've labeled a feature like this with is uh, downsampling, but I think it really, it, it, I think every database, every project has different um, like terminologies for that. But yeah, downsampling is absolutely something we we want to do. And it is something that will happen once we have that kind of compaction mechanism in place 
where um, what like that that happens what after things go out of memory essentially. So once we've written things into the those Parquet files, Parquet has actually allows you to add metadata about certain things and things like cumulative, um, let's say CPU uh, time for stack traces or something like that. Is something that you can put in there and then it'll kind of um, aggregate all of that. It it is possible that for for um, for for some things we might need to implement um, downsampling ourselves, though. That we would kind of let's say we store maybe with resolutions. That's how we know it, at least from um, the metrics world. That we add up all of the um, stack traces of the same processes that we've seen on the same day or something, and then. All of a sudden, um, instead of like 10 second granularity, we would query over a year only, you know, one sample per day, um, which dramatically um, allows like us to improve the query performance for things like that. So, yes, um, downsampling is definitely coming. Great question, though. I, it's it's also a feature that I'm looking forward to a lot. <laughs> it's one of those queries that that I love doing. Yeah, exactly. That's the I guess the reason why I'm I'm asking it is because I initially naively thought that it, it means that you actually you know remove. The, the older blocks, but uh, as it turns out, <laughs> when I looked into it, um, that's you know not necessarily the case. It's really focusing, or usually focusing on the query performance, not necessarily on the you know um, reducing the, the footprint and, and from permanent storage. Yeah, so the, the, the 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 big reason there is, I mean, you you can configure um, at least in the Thanos uh, case. It is possible to configure um, the retention for a certain downsampling um, resolution as well. Um, so you could say that, uh, like one hour resolution, you you keep for forever, um, and then like raw resolution, you only keep for a, a month or something like that. Um, so. I, I guess we would do something very, very similar. Uh, but fundamentally, you're right. Um, it, it's a it's a query speed optimization, not necessarily a storage um, optimization. Although it could be used as, as that as well. But primarily, we're looking at it from that angle as well. The 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 reality is like object storage is incredibly cheap, um, and so hopefully people won't have to make that. Um, like compromise, but it, it can still happen. The storage might be cheap, but egress or ingress network might not be. That's where. <laughs> True. All right. Any other questions? Please go ahead. Hey, hello. Oh, I'm here for like a month. I should have tested uh, Node.js a bit, but I got sick for like three weeks. So here I am now. I was looking at the code in the past two weeks of sorts. And I have a remark about the, the contributing part. The setup is assuming that you are on Linux particularly, and uh, I'm on a Mac, for example. And I did a bunch of things with Brew and uh, Go Get that I don't want to do with the things that you are installing the, them, like uh, buff or whatever these other things. So, and also like uh, Minikube and whatnot is required. So I'm using Kind for most everything. I would like to continue with Kind. So I was thinking if, um, is it uh, okay if I push or do something about the setup for Mac users and uh, with Kind, for example? Yeah, please, please do. Um, the one problem with kind, unfortunately, is although you're you're on a Mac, so this might actually be okay. But um, the the problem is um, 
we actually need a real, yeah, the, the, it won't work with kind. We need a real root um, for Parka agent. Um, and with kind, you actually get uh, create a user namespace. And so you're not actually true root of that host. Um, and we do need to be the true true root. Otherwise, we can't see the correct um, process IDs to do some like metadata resolution. Um, mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we do we have only gotten it to work with um, with Minikube. Um, on a on a typical cluster, it's not a problem because you don't tend to you tend to run your Kubernetes cluster in a user namespace. Um, so, yeah. Unfortunately, that's that's the situation that we okay. find ourselves in. So it uh, okay, okay. And I also noticed that uh, most of the issues now are UI related. I'm not a front end developer, so I don't really care. I would want to do something backend if I can help. For example, um, the gRPC setup is a bit sparse, to be honest, and uh, how you generate and what you do, it's not really clear. So. I, I would like uh, some kind of readme of uh, something like that. That is because you have uh, on the root, you have a yarn with uh, whatever it's needed uh, for TS uh, gRPC. And you have the other ones inside the, the other part, whatever it's called. And uh, for example, on a backend side on the, on the PRs, I don't know how the triage is done now. So there is one first issue uh, and help needed for CI for multi-test, uh, multi-architecture testing. Other than that, I don't see backend specific things. So I don't know, maybe there is a one that is called Flatten uh, the Flame Graph gRPC API, but it's combined in everything. I don't know, maybe that one can be split in backend and frontend if, if applicable, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, really good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the flatten uh, flatten flame graph thing. Actually, you, you're totally right. Like, what we could do is we could only implement the backend part first, um, and kind of leave the the existing flame graph API that we have, um, because this is really an optimization, right? So that the flame graphs can be rendered uh, more quickly on the front end. Um, so yeah, if there's something you want to do, if you, just the backend part you want to pick up, I think absolutely go yeah. for it. And um, it's you are right. Really, that, it's not ahead. really visible if someone is doing something. Currently. Yeah. Um, I, my, I, I think generally my suggestion there would be, like, comment on the issue, and um, like one of us will, one of the Parker team members will get back to you, like saying, sure, go ahead. Um, you, you got this, and then we can also assign you to it. Typically, if an issue is unassigned, uh, nobody's working on it. OK, and uh, the JavaScript bindings for the front end, th those can be in the front end part, or they're also like a back end thing for the gRPC JavaScript? Um, so th those are all like auto generated, so it doesn't really um, matter. Like, OK, okay great. What, what, once, you, once you define the like proto buffs, it'll be automatically generated, but you don't have to use it yet. That we can have uh, a front-end engineer do uh, and consume the API once the new version of that API actually exists. And uh, are the older 2021 things still relevant, at least the, the ones at the bottom of the line, of the, of the list? There are a few of them, like almost a year old. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we went pretty recently through uh, through all of the issues. I think they're all they're all valid still. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, we can we can totally go through through them again. Let me let me do that. I think we're slightly busy with the new columnar store. So like everything outside the storage is open for contributions right now. Like we like for the most part aren't like super focused on these. Um, I can go through like the packages that like does the querying, as you said, like there's a flattened flame graph thing. Um, there are other low hanging fruits for sure that we can um, kind of create issues for that you can then pick up um, if you are into into these kind of things. Um, yeah, like really, really good um, 
that you point that out and we'll make sure to to update these and let us know on Discord in in between these meetings. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and the, the remark about Podman, I'm not sure about Podman, but I want to try different. Uh, it's nerd tree plus something else, I suppose. That uh, might help to not use uh, Minikube. But, uh, I think I think sadly it's probably going to be the same um, because it's un like the underlying way the um, the C groups are used to create the containers, etc., is still the same. Um, so in okay. the end, at least for the Parker agent, we we still need a mini QVM or some some VM. Okay, because this is a VM actually; it's not a the inside Docker. Okay, it's then it's great sure VM. About which which one is that? Uh, it's Nerd Three with. Um... I heard of this. Uh... Yeah, can you share, please? <laughs> I yeah. was a bit interested. Nerd, yeah. Catalan. Nerd Catalan. Will, ah, I heard about yeah. that. Nerd CTL, yes. Uh, I will post it in in um, in Discord. I don't have it uh, right away. I forgot the commands. <laughs> yeah, we can we can definitely tr try it out. Uh, I would love if <laughs> we can find a solution that's not Minikube because the Minikube kernel version is horribly outdated, which has prevented us from using some more modern kernel features, actually. Um, we are working with the um, Minikube uh, maintainers to help upgrade this, but it's unfortunately a very long process. Um, yeah. Um, th there is there is a, a tiny bit of hope. If there's someone who is like really an expert on all uh, on like very deep Linux um, namespaces um, details. Um, there is, I think there should be a way to um, discover nested process IDs, even if you are using user namespaces. And so if we do that resolution correctly, um, it, I think it could be possible for us to actually run um, Parka agent in a kind cluster as well, or anything that uses um, user namespaces. Do we have an um, issue on that? Because I'm happy to look into that. Um, I don't think we have an issue on that, but um, let me let me create if one. You, if you create one, more than happy to look into that. I uh, yeah. oh, that done. I screwed a little bit around with that some time ago, writing a tool. Um, so why not? Let's have a look. Very cool. Yeah, I, I will do that, and I I'll, I'll ping you on it as well. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, Lima. Yeah, yeah. I, I also use Lima. That's essentially also you know the VM, right? You have essentially a VM on on Mac. Yep. Very Interesting. Nice. I've never heard of this. Oh yeah, yeah. Lima is cool. I, I do all my stuff. Great. Yeah. I just yeah. just today got a new M1 Mac, so gotta try. <laughs> I all think the new tool. already it made work. it. It might Did, not work. I saw some something on Twitter saying like, yeah, it made it or, or working on it or whatever. I, but yeah, give give it a try for that. I think you will like it. Yeah, it's it has a similar API like Docker and the Docker Compose actually works out of the box of sorts with with Nerd. Cool. Awesome. Any, mm -hmm. Anything that, that came up from uh, Fostum, Matthias? Did you get any? Yeah, I, I just wanted to point out that <laughs> I forgot to mention earlier that the Fostum talk happened on Sunday, um, and you can you can watch the talk. It's already live. I, I approved it. I think even on Sunday still. So yeah, it's it's live. You can watch it, and there's a great Q and A at the end as well. Um, no, I think. I think Fossum was was great again, and the talks were definitely super interesting. So, yeah. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, make sure to join the Discord. If there is something in between these meetings, uh, we are always happy to have there. And 
yeah thank you for attending and see you in two weeks uh make sure to vote on on the on the poll whether we want to move it to monday wednesday or thursday okay that's it then have a happy local time as frederick always tends to say <laughs> bye bye everybody bye -bye. thank you have a good one see you bye now